As long as men have taken to the skies to fight to the death, pilots and crews have felt the calling to add custom identification art to the front of their aircraft. Some of them did this for luck, others to remember their women back home, and still others to put fear into the heart of the enemy. In this new series, Nose Art Stories, we will look at notable, unique, and famous nose art from World War II aircraft and attempt to bring these beautiful planes back to life and tell their courageous, incredible, and sometimes tragic tales to help remember the brave men from the greatest generation. Welcome to my new series, Nose Art Stories by TJ3 History. In case you are unfamiliar with this series, I will be picking five memorable, unique, or funny pieces of nose art from World War II and telling the stories of their aircraft and pilots. Please feel free to comment suggestions if you have other aircraft that you think would make a great addition and make sure to subscribe for all my other videos. Enjoy! To start off today's beautiful works of art, we go to a famous P-47 Thunderbolt of the 56th Fighter Group flown by Captain Fred Christensen. This fighter, named Miss Fire, was named after his college girlfriend, hence her name written on the side of the fighter in addition to the nose art. This design would quite possibly be one of the most enticing pieces of art in the entire war, and Captain Christensen would post quite the impressive combat record to back it he would see an incredible amount of success in this warbird, achieving a total of 21 and a half victories in the conflict. This tally also includes a mission in July of 1944, where he would take down a total of six German Ju-52 transport planes in a single mission. This sortie would see him become the first pilot in the entire 8th Air Force to achieve such a feat in a single day of combat. Following his tour of duty, he was sent back to the States in September of 1944. Fortunately, both Misfire and Fred Christensen would survive the war. The second aircraft we will cover is a B-17 bomber. This four-engine flying fortress would have the bare aluminum design that was typical of the late war bombers and is known for her gorgeous patriotic woman painted on the nose. Unlike our first aircraft, however, Yankee Lady was actually delivered to the U.S. Army Air Force in July of 1945, just one month before the Japanese would surrender. Because of this, she did not actually get to see combat in World War II, but would instead be converted into a patrol plane for the U.S. Coast Guard where she served as a sea and air rescue aircraft across multiple parts of the world until her retirement in 1958. Her story would not end here, however, as she was sold to a private owner and was actually used as one of the B-17 bombers in the famous 1970 movie Tora Tora Tora. She would be sold again and completely rebuilt in the 1990s to match the World War II era interior and paint scheme. It was actually during this restoration that she was finally given a name and painted with her famous nose art. This iconic B-17 is still flying today and offers rides to the public for $495. Coming in at the third spot in today's list, we go to another four-engine bomber, but this one being a B-24 Liberator of the 467th Bomb Group. This American aircraft would be given the name Witchcraft and would be painted with a truly unique design that does not resemble any others that I have seen. In somewhat of a cartoon style, a witch can be seen riding on a machine gun instead of a broom where she is dropping a bomb down below. What really sets this nose art apart, however, is the incredible combat record that can be seen above the iconic witch. In her tenure in the European theater of war, Witchcraft would compile an amazing tally of 130 combat missions completed, one of the highest in the entire war. And incredibly, she did all of this without ever having to turn back during a mission and never had a crew member be injured or killed. Following the war, she would be sold for scrap in October of 1945. Fortunately, however, many years later in 1984, another B-24 Liberator was restored and painted with the original Witchcraft Livery, bringing her back to life once again. 
This aircraft is still flying with the annual Wings of Freedom tour and is one of the only airworthy B-24 Liberators left in the world. Taking the second slot is a P-38 with a hint of affection for the French lifestyle. This Lightning Fighter was famously titled Le Vin, Le Femme, and Le Chaison, French for wine, women, and song. The pilot of this bird would be Major Paul Sabo. Sabo would be one of the flight leaders in the 20th Fighter Group, flying a number of different missions against the German Luftwaffe. Throughout his tour of duty, he would rack up five confirmed kills with one unconfirmed. Most of these were German BF-109 fighters that were taken down on escort or patrol missions. The famous art that he would have placed on his P-38 would detail three of his favorite things, making sure to get them all into the design by creatively placing the girl into the glass in front of the playing musical notes. This famous fighter would survive the war along with her pilot, Major Sabo. She was likely scrapped shortly after World War II ended. Finally, taking the top spot for this video, we will look at another piece of nose art in an American P-47 Thunderbolt by the name of Dottie May. This gorgeous fighter was flown by Lieutenant Larry Cole and saw action over the European theater after being delivered to the front in December of 1944. This design was based on the December pinup girl titled Santa's Little Helper in the 1945 Vargas calendar and was named Dottie May after his wife in the States. Her primary role in the 8th Air Force was ground attack missions that included targets like bridges and supply depots. It flew 90 missions in the next few months before it would meet an unfortunate fate at the hands of her own pilot on the very last day of the war. On May 8th of 1945, Lieutenant Henry Moore, a new pilot in Dottie May, was flying at a low altitude over a concentration camp in Ebensee, Austria. In an attempt to try and raise the morale of the prisoners stationed here, he attempted an aerial demonstration. Sometime during this maneuver, however, he lost too much altitude and would actually clip her propeller blades on the water of the Tronze, a nearby lake. The Thunderbolt would subsequently end up in the body of water after a successful crash landing, where it would quickly sink to the bottom of the lake. Her pilot was fortunately able to escape after the landing, but Dottie May was lost. That is, until 60 years later, in 2005, when she would see the light of day once again after some aviation enthusiasts in Austria would actually succeed in not only raising the preserved aircraft from the depths, but would undertake an intense restoration effort. Because of these groups, Dottie May is once again in immaculate flying condition and is currently located in California. I hope you enjoyed this new video from my nose art series. If you want to support my content, please check out the fan store here and make sure to click subscribe and comment if you have any new suggestions for new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.